Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. Okay, we are still in the second week uh, syllabus, which is the microwave waveguide part two. So I have discussed um, part of the microwave comp uh, waveguide components in the first part. So in these slides, I'll continue with the second part of the uh, waveguide structure. Okay, so today we are about to discuss on planar transmission line. So if compared to the uh, conventional um, waveguide that I have shown earlier, such as the quetch line, rectangular and circular waveguide. So um, today we are about to look at the planar transmission line that's usually being used in integrated circuit or in planar structure. So planar, usually the structure can be printed directly on the uh, substrate or the surface of the structure. So the advantages of this planar transmission line is low profile and lightweight. And it miniaturization of micro circuit, meaning that you can produce a smaller structure if compared to, you, uh, to using a conventional structure. And easy fabrication since the uh, the material or the structure can be printed directly on the board and it is tinned and using tin film technology and photolithography and it allows control characteristic impedance of transmission lines since we can vary the uh, size the width the dimension of the structure easily if compared to the conventional waveguide however the disadvantages of the planar transmission its limited capability of handling high power and it is lossy if compared to the conventional coaxial or uh, rectangular or circular waveguide and at higher frequencies above 20 gigahertz the dielectric losses uh, increase or uh, is higher if compared to lower frequency so that it limits the overall performance of the system Right, so we are about to discuss on the micro strip lined, strip lined, and coplanar waveguide as an example of a planar transmission line. Okay, the first one is the micro strip lined waveguide. So basically, the planar transmission line is part of the waveguide, but it is since it is printed on the uh, substrate layer, so it is called a micro strip line or micro strip transmission line. Okay, the micro strip line is an electrical transmission line that can be fabricated using printed circuit board and it is used to transmit microwave frequency signal. So the electromagnetic wave or the uh, microwave frequency signal uh, is traveling uh, in between the inhomogeneous medium. What does it mean? It's, this is the micro strip line. It is being separated by a dielectric material, uh, material and back with a ground plane. So you have a ground plane here and here is your micro strip line and this is the dielectric material. So the dielectric material could be the um, FR4 board, it's uh, the standard PCB board, the Rogers uh, or even the uh, textile material so depending on the application. Okay. And uh, the, the inhomogeneous meaning that this material above here is air. Okay, it has different uh, relative permittivity or dielectric constant if compared to the dielectric material. Okay, so the wave uh, in micro strip line propagated through uh, different property. Okay, for example, here the E field that is going out from the, the structure through the material, the air or the substrate. Okay, so the, uh, the signal travels across um, two or more different medium. So it is called inhomogeneous medium. Genus medium. Alright, so the uh, relative or effective 
uh, target constant or permittivity epsilon r basically representing uh, the um, equivalent homo to homogeneous medium okay so it this one we consider the air and also the the other materials involved in the signal propagation all right so there yeah as mentioned the microstrip line consists of conducting strip okay this is the conducting strip separated by uh, from a ground plane by a dielectric layer okay these are examples of the microstrip line in which you can see there's a line lies on the board okay the board is basically the um this is the dielectric material probably the fr4 or the pcb board and back with the ground plane okay the ground plane usually having the same property as the strip line or the conductor okay as in the wave um, rectangular and circular wave guide so the dominant mode for the microstrip line is quasi tem mode again it is no uh, te10 or te01 or tm10 mode okay it is quasi tm mode Okay, the figures show the 2D plot of field power density distribution of shielded microwave transmission line at 20 GHz. And the size of the uh, structure or the microstrip line in terms of the width, the width this, uh, of the strip, the thickness of the insulating layer, PCB or ceramic. Okay, this is the dielectric materials. And the dielectric constant of the uh, dielectric determine okay will affect the character characteristic impedance of the microstrip line so we are going to discuss in detail in terms of the equation related to the uh, zeg uh, in the next session okay basically uh, the in the design process you need to properly determine the width of the uh, and the thickness of the microstrip line so because it will control the um, how the field uh, propagated and how or what's the frequency uh, for uh, is it suitable for uh, the targeted application and how about the radiation and etc okay the slide summarizes the um, equation related to uh, determining or calculating the width of the microstrip line which involve or uh, which include uh, the thickness h the relative permittivity uh, okay a the area and etc so each of these can be determined by the following equations and the effective permittivity of the microstrip line due to different um, permittivity involved in the uh, signal transmission so can be simplified by using this equation so basically thus uh, the calculation has been met uh, simpler by using a calculator okay that's an, an an online calculator in which you can use that calculator to calculate the dimension of the microstrip line okay prior to the design so once you have all the dimensions then you can use that values into your uh, uh, simulation tools or simulation software and then you can simulate whether you can get the uh, response or the uh, frequency you are targeted on or not Okay, the following equations 7 and 8 basically representing the characteristic impedance signal of the microstrip line and also the length of the microstrip line okay so c here is the velocity of light in free space so that's related to the wavelength of the targeted frequency band okay additional information about microstrip transmission line so the higher the impedance uh, the higher the dielectric constant or the permittivity, the thinner the microstrip line, keeping the thickness of the dielectric and impedance of the line constant. While the thinner the dielectric structure, okay, so you have the 
marker strip line and then you have the dilatory okay back with the and ground plane right so the thinner the electric the thinner the line is so the line meaning the, your the hitch of your micro strip line keeping the electric constant and impedance of the line constant while the higher the electric constant the smaller the circuit is and the wider the lines the lower the impedance okay we are going to look at the effect uh, of those parameters in the later session. Okay, next is the strip line waveguide. Look at the difference between the micro strip line and the strip line waveguide. Okay, the strip line waveguide use a flat strip of metal which is sandwiched between two parallel crown planes. The insulating materials of the substrate forms a dielectric. Okay. If compared to the micro strip line just now, you can see that the in micro strip line you have the uh, lines on top of the dielectric. Okay, back with the ground plane. This is the micro strip. Micro strip. While in strip line, you have the lines being sandwiched in between two dielectric substrate and back on top and at the bottom by a ground plane okay so you have ground plane and you have another ground plane okay your strip line is in the middle and then separated by dielectric Okay, that's the difference between strip line and micro strip line. Okay, another type of the planar transmission line is the coplanar waveguide or called CPW. Okay, in CPW the structure is more or less the same as a micro strip line, but it, it includes three conductors separated by smaller gaps. Okay, you have three conductors, the first one, the center one, and the third one that printed on the same side of the substrate, okay? Just like the microstrip line. Since it is, hence it is called coplanar. Okay, the written conductor are separated from the central. So this is the central. The written conductors, meaning the first one and the third one, separated from the central track by a small gap. So G, okay, the gap in between those conductors and also the central line. And then the electromagnetic wave carried by a coplanar waveguide exists partly in the dielectric substrate and partly in the air above it. Okay, so the E field traveling outward from the structure. Okay, in the uh, in between two different uh, dielectric constant or permittivity of different materials in air and also in dielectric so just like the micro strip line so the dielectric constant of the substrate will be different and greater than the air in which wave is traveling as in in homogeneous medium okay in homogeneous Genus medium has been discussed in the uh, previous slides. And in terms of the mode, CPW or the coplanar waveguide will not support the true TEM wave at non zero frequencies. But the major problem with the uh, coplanar waveguide is that it is it having non unique characteristic impedance. Okay, because of the infinite range of ratio between the center strip width and gap width okay the center line width w with the gap width with g okay uh, in practical for the z not for micro strip line is unique that's decided by the strip width substrate height and substrate permittivity so we are going to look at this calculation in the design process 
the advantages of the CPW or coplanar wave guide in comparison with microstrip. It is easier grounding or surface mounted. It's lower fabrication costs, reduce dispersion and radiation losses, and photolithographically defined structures with relatively low de dependency on substrate thickness. Okay, because as mentioned earlier that the property uh, or the zag knot of the mark strip um, line is decided by the strip width, substrate height, and permittivity. Okay, so substrate height meaning the thickness of the substrate. But if you are using the CPW, so you can have a structure that more efficient structure by low dependency on the substrate thickness. Okay, next uh, is the horn waveguide. So I believe that you have seen this kind of waveguide in your third year PBL lab. So in which uh, during the lab you are required to design uh, a horn antenna with a, to achieve certain uh, gain and also targeted frequencies. And you have played around with the width and the height of the uh, horn to get the response or the performance as required. Okay, so this is another example of one we have guide. It is custom made for 47 gigahertz and it achieved 20.3 dBi gain. And another one is the cavity resonator and this has been uh, done in the second year PBL lab microwave lab in which uh, the cavity resonator we have you have two metal plates in which uh, the separated by a cavity or empty space and this technique is usually being used to measure the permittivity or the property of the samples or the materials for example in the second year lab uh, I think EMT lab uh, there's a hay fiber materials that being placed in between uh, the cavity, okay, inside the uh, empty space cavity, so that the property or the relative constant and the conductivity of the hay fiber can be determined um, by measuring the permittivity uh, by supplying the uh, current and also voltage across the cavity. Okay, so we are going to look at this uh, examples later on. Okay, that's another examples of cavity resonators. Okay, the difference in the shape and the size of the structure depending on the samples you are about to measure and depending on the application it will be used on. Okay, that's another example of cavity resonators for different application. Okay, this is using the microstrip ring resonator, so where the sample is placed on top, so the property of the material can be determined. And okay, as mentioned earlier, uh, the resonant mode basically controls how the uh, signal travels. Okay, it determines how the uh, signals travel across the structure. Okay, for example, TM010, so this is where the magnetic field is the dominant field across the structure. So, and again, it depends on the application, whether uh, the electric or the magnetic field is the dominant fields required to be uh, determined. Okay, so the electric uh, these two figures shows different mode. Look at how the fields, the electric fields, automatic field travels across two metal plates. Okay, uh, these two represents the uh, cavity resonators. Okay, in which the samples is placed in between uh, the two metal plates so that the property or the constant, the relative constant of the materials can be determined. Okay, this slide shows one of the example of the cavity resonators 
been used in order to determine the sample property. So I believe this is one of the DRA materials, the white, the white uh, samples in the middle. So the numbering here representing the components or um, uh, the structure involved in this measurement. So the first one is the silver plates and then second one is carbon nanotube sheet and then the three and four is the dielectric reference and also the coaxial respectively. Okay, so each of these components have its own permittivity or the constant or the property and each of these having uh, its own function. Okay, why the silver plates is placed there? Will that change the property of the modes? Will that change how the signal travels and etc. Okay, so we are going to look at that later on. Okay, the following slides show the commercially available cavity resonators uh, that's available from uh, the a different manufacturer such as the Keysight, Keycom, MSI, Damascus and etc. So depending on uh, different types of measurement, what type of measurement needed and uh, different shape and also different parameters being used in order to uh, address or to conduct different type of measurement. Okay, same goes here. There are a different uh, manufacturer of the cavity resonator and also uh, different mode and for different application as well. Okay, with that, I end the uh, topic of waveguide um, introduction into waveguide structure. So next, we are about to discuss on the basic parameters involved in microwave engineering and also the transmission line. Thank you.